I'm more than happy to leave you here to die of your wounds, but there is a way off this planet. And to do it, it's gonna take both of us. So welcome to episode 11. This one's called Etheria. It was directed by April Winnie, who's a first time director for us. Uh, really, really excited about her and what she's done with this one and written by Mr. Jeffrey Blaming back again. Jeff, how are you, bud? I'm doing great. I'm very excited about this episode. This has been a fantastic season, but this is going to be a great episode. Yeah, this one's really special, really different, and, you know, was conceived really from the beginning as the sort of standalone story that it is. He's alive. Episode 711 takes us to yet another new planet, Etheria, the episode's name. <laughs> It's here that our characters discover some of the beliefs and the thing, the underpinnings that form the foundation of this weird, religious, uh, militaristic, you know, society in Bardo. In the life of the shepherd for all mankind, he saved us. No one is coming to save us. Cadigan himself visited Etheria on his relentless pursuit of transcendence. So it's sort of bringing everything together. This is your shepherd. I told you. This guy is a cult leader. I saw a video of him preaching on Earth. A fraud, a con man. He predicted the Earth's end and brought his people safely across the stars. To this point, you're sort of chalking Cadigan up to being this sort of raving madman. And in fact, this episode, it makes you sort of believe somewhat in, in Cadigan, which is, you know, sort of unexpected. We're on a pilgrimage of our own. You may be. I'm headed for the exit. But the shepherd guides us both. In my sort of headcanon, I'm not sure we ever say it uh, overtly in the show, but every planet in the solar system, uh, rather every planet in the universe that is potentially uh, life-sustaining probably has a stone on it. Um, and, you know, at some point, who knows where the journey took Cadigan. I believe in what I can prove. Do you love your family? Your friends? And a stupid question is that you know I do. Prove it. What's kind of cool about this episode for me is that in part it was inspired by an experience of mine. I was in Tucson, Arizona with my brother. We were gonna climb this mountain range that's north of the city. And we started out at first light. We climbed and we climbed. And by the end of the day, worn out, exhausted, sweating, we reached the top only to see that we had only climbed this small mountain range and that the actual range we thought we were climbing was still ahead of us and of course completely unattainable. Yeah. And I remember you, Jason, said that is the most apt metaphor for, well, for the creative process, but, but like for life. My people, that is what is real. And yet there's still something missing inside you. Death and despair hover around you like a shroud. When we really are making some important, I think, uh, statements with this one. And one of the, those statements that I believe to be uh, a life lesson that everybody needs to realize is that there is no destination. You know, it's all about the journey. And those destination points are very fleeting. When you, when you achieve something, it's great for a moment, but then you have to, you know, keep going. And if you aren't enjoying the day-to-day, -day, if you aren't enjoying the climb, to use the metaphor of this, then, you know, you're going to be miserable because those moments that do finally come true for people, when you sell a script, you get a show picked up, whatever the case may be, you know, it's great in the moment, trust me, but it doesn't solve your problems. You exactly. Know? So Jeff, thank you, bud, really for everything. You've been a great presence in the room, a calming influence. And, you know, your writing is always beautiful, especially when you're really connected to the story like you were in this one. But anyway, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you, Jason. From the ashes, we will rise. From the ashes, we will rise.